Right now, in the United States alone, over 3,000 people are waiting for a heart transplant. 18 Americans die every single day waiting for an organ that never comes. Worldwide, the shortage is catastrophic. April 15, 2019, Tel Aviv University. Professor Tal Dvir stands in front of the world's media. In his hand is something that shouldn't exist. A heart, not a plastic model, not a diagram, a real heart printed from human cells, complete with chambers, ventricles, blood vessels. The first time anyone, anywhere, has successfully 3D printed an entire vascularized organ. This is not science fiction, this is science. The process is extraordinary. First, doctors take a small biopsy of fatty tissue from the patient, just a few cells. Those cells are reprogrammed, turned into pluripotent stem cells that can become any cell type in the body. Some become heart muscle cells, others become endothelial cells that line blood vessels. Next, the team creates bio-ink, a gel-like substance made from the patient's own biological materials, sugars, proteins, hydrogels. The cells are suspended in this bio-ink. It's like ink in a printer, except the ink is alive. Then comes the printing, layer by layer, cell by cell, following a digital model created from CT scans and MRI images of a real human heart. The printer deposits the bio-ink with microscopic precision, building chambers, creating blood vessels, forming the complex architecture of a beating heart. The entire process takes about four hours. The result? A heart made entirely from the patient's own cells, which means no risk of rejection, no need for immunosuppressant drugs, no waiting lists, no donor shortages. But there's a problem. The cells can contract. They're alive. They're trying to beat, but they're not coordinated. They haven't learned to work together as a functional organ. This heart is rabbit-sized. It can't pump blood. Not yet. Veer's team is now culturing these printed hearts in the lab, teaching them to behave like real hearts, training the cells to synchronize their contractions, building the electrical pathways that coordinate heartbeats. It's painstaking work, but the progress is real. And it's not just hearts. Researchers worldwide, many building on Israeli innovations, are 3D printing lungs with 4,000 kilometers of capillaries, kidneys that can filter blood, liver tissue that processes toxins, skin for burn victims, corneas for the blind. Companies like Precise Bio, with operations in Israel and the United States, are commercializing the technology. Their 4D biofabrication platform is advancing bioprinted corneas toward human trials. Other organs will follow. Maybe in 10 years, there will be organ printers in the finest hospitals around the world, and these procedures will be conducted routinely. We will start with simple organs, skin, cartilage, then more complex tissues, eventually the heart, liver, kidneys. So how do you explain it? How does one small nation, surrounded by conflict, born from trauma, constantly defending its existence, become a global leader in healing? Israelis don't have the luxury of failure. Every problem we face is existential. Water scarcity, we innovate desalination. Military medicine, we pioneer trauma care. There's no other option. We solve it or we don't survive. It's called chutzpah, audacity, nerve, boldness. That uniquely Israeli combination of confidence and desperation, of refusing to accept limits, of asking why not when everyone else says impossible. But it's more than attitude, it's infrastructure. World-class universities concentrated in a tiny geographic area, enabling collaboration. Technology transfer offices that commercialize academic research. Government support through the Israel Innovation Authority. And venture capital, billions invested annually in life sciences. Global giants have taken notice. GE Healthcare, Medtronic, Philips, all have major research centers in Israel. 
They come for the talent, the innovation ecosystem, the ability to move from idea to prototype the clinical trial faster than anywhere else. And here's what's remarkable. Israeli medical innovation doesn't discriminate. The pill cam diagnoses cancer in patients worldwide, regardless of religion, nationality, or politics. Mobilized technology prevents accidents in cars driven by people who've never heard of Israel. The emergency bandage saves lives on battlefields where Israeli soldiers would be enemies. The Heart Knows No Borders project brings together Israeli, Jordanian, and Palestinian doctors to test cardiac devices. Politics stops at the hospital door. When human life is at stake, there are no enemies. Even as boycott movements try to isolate Israel, those same activists may someday find themselves diagnosed with a pill cam, treated with Israeli cancer therapies, or receiving a 3D printed organ developed in Tel Aviv. The irony is inescapable. Today, 1,800 Israeli life sciences companies are working on the next breakthroughs. AI-powered diagnostic tools that detect diseases before symptoms appear. Nanorobots that deliver drugs directly to cancer cells. Brain-computer interfaces that restore movement to the paralyzed. Genetic therapies that cure diseases we thought were incurable. Dr. Amit Gofer never got to use the rewalk he invented. His injuries were too severe, but thousands of others now walk because of him. That's the essence of medical innovation, solving a problem you might never benefit from yourself because someone somewhere will. From Jerusalem to New York to Singapore, Israeli medical technology is healing the world, not through weapons, not through force, through innovation, through the refusal to accept suffering is inevitable. A paralyzed veteran stands for the first time in years. A cancer patient enters remission after experimental immunotherapy. A person swallows a pill and avoids invasive surgery. A driver's car automatically brakes, preventing a fatal crash. Somewhere, a heart beats printed from cells that didn't exist a decade ago. This is the Israeli medical revolution, not fought with armies, but with microscopes and 3D printers and computer code. Not driven by conquest, but by that ancient Jewish commandment, whoever saves one life saves the entire world. In laboratories across Israel tonight, researchers are working on tomorrow's miracles. They're training 3D printed hearts to beat, programming immune cells to fight cancer, designing devices that will restore sight, hearing, movement. They're not doing it for fame or fortune or recognition. They're doing it because somewhere, a person they'll never meet is suffering. And suffering, when you have the knowledge to prevent it, is unacceptable. That's the Israeli medical revolution, where necessity meets innovation, where trauma becomes healing, where a nation born from loss dedicates itself to saving lives. One breakthrough at a time, one patient at a time, one life at a time.